Geothermal systems are a great way to deliver renewable and efficient heating and cooling to a space such as a building or a system such as a domestic hot water tank. This energy may be transferred to the target area by a ground source heat pump or a heat exchanger. The amount of usable thermal energy this equipment supplies is called the system capacity. To design a reliable geothermal system, this system capacity needs to be accurately predicted before it is even built. That way the equipment can be sized properly for the needs of the supply space or system. This system is connected to the ground using a loop of fluid that branches off into a network of in-ground heat exchangers. There are a growing number of styles of in-ground heat exchangers, and the trends we are talking about here apply to all of them. One of the most important variables in a geothermal system is the change in fluid temperature value. This value can be used with the energy equation to calculate the in-ground heat exchange capacity, which is the amount of heating or cooling the ground is supplying to the fluid entering and exiting the ground loops. The energy amount supplied by this equation can allow us to directly compare our ground-based system with any other energy system to determine relative profitability and efficiency. We can then use the efficiency equation and the coefficient of performance of the heat pump or efficiency of the heat exchanger to calculate exactly how much of the energy from the ground is being transferred to the supply space. In this part one of our series on overlooked essentials in geothermal energy, we're focusing on this area of the system, the change in fluid temperature that occurs at the inlet and outlet to the in-ground heat exchangers. A common term for this variable is delta T, and it is calculated as the inlet temperature value minus the outlet temperature value. We will call this the baseline delta T to refer to the original designed value that we expect to see in our system. If the inlet fluid temperature is coming in warm at 25 degrees Celsius and exiting cool at 10 degrees Celsius, then our baseline delta T for the system is positive 15. This is because the equation for delta T is inlet temperature minus outlet temperature, not the other way around. Since the fluid traveled through the ground to become cooler than it was originally, this is called the cooling mode of operation, which has values that are positive. If the inlet fluid temperature started at 10 degrees Celsius and was warmed up by the ground to reach 25 degrees Celsius, then the baseline delta T is negative 15. The fluid has been heated by the geosystem, so this is the heating mode. Values in heating are negative due to the opposite direction of heat exchange compared to cooling. This delta T value is essential in a geothermal system capacity, but what if our predictions or measurements of it are off from reality by just one degree Celsius? What if we were able to make small changes to the system to increase or reduce the baseline delta T by just one degree? Is a one degree difference in delta T small enough to be ignored? In most aspects of life, a 1 degree change in temperature is insignificant. If your house's thermostat is off by 1 degree Celsius, you will probably never notice. However, there are some situations in which even tiny temperature changes can make a difference. Is the delta T of a geothermal system one of them? This video compares a baseline delta T to two cases where it is increased and reduced by only 1 degree Celsius. What are the effects to efficiency, capacity, cost, and total annual energy that would result from these three cases. Using the energy equation with a constant flow rate and fluid properties, we can compare the baseline delta T to the in-ground heat exchange capacity that results. Here we're working with three delta T magnitudes of 2, 5, and 10. For our baseline case, we expect the heating and cooling capacity from the in-ground heat exchangers to be just over 400 watts when the delta T is minus 10 and positive 10 degrees Celsius respectively. As the change in fluid temperature reduces, the in-ground heat exchange capacity decreases. Now let's say the baseline delta T was reduced by one degree for all of these cases. Instead of being negative 10 degrees Celsius, it is negative 11 degrees Celsius. This results in more heating energy than our baseline case and less cooling energy. When the baseline delta T is instead increased by 1 degree Celsius for all of these cases, the in-ground heat exchangers are producing less heating energy in the heating mode, but more cooling energy in the cooling mode. The magnitude of all of these values are affected by the fluid's flow rate. However, the percentage difference in capacity from these 1 degree Celsius is the same for all flow cases. 
For example, at a small baseline delta t of plus or minus 2 degrees, the increase of plus or minus 1 degrees to the baseline delta t results in a 50% change in capacity. As delta t is increased, this percentage difference decreases in a consistent trend. This result is very useful for operators of geothermal energy systems. If I know that my system is typically operating at low delta T's in the spring season, and I need a bump in heating energy, I know that I can increase this heating capacity by up to 50% just by reducing my fluid temperature difference by one degree Celsius. This in-ground heat exchange capacity is connected to the total system capacity by the efficiency of the heat pump or heat exchanger in between the ground loop and the supply space. Ground source heat pump manufacturers publish data in their manuals about the change in coefficient of performance as the fluid exiting the ground and entering the heat pump changes in temperature. This graph shows that the heat pump's efficiency in the heating mode reduces as the outlet fluid temperature from the ground reduces. Likewise, the cooling efficiency reduces as the outlet fluid temperature increases in temperature. All heat pumps have operating temperature limits. These are decided based on efficiencies, ability to transfer heat in the desired direction, and limitations of working fluids, such as the freezing point of water. This means that the plus or minus one degree Celsius change in delta T can also move the system outside of a desirable operating range of temperatures. This change in delta T has two effects on the system capacity through the heat pump. First, it results in a change in in-ground heat exchange capacity, which will affect the system capacity. And secondly, it results in a change in outlet fluid temperature, assuming the inlet is constant, which affects the COP value and may put the heat pump at risk for operating outside of the desired fluid temperature range. If the system is operating near the edge of a heat pump's operating range, then the effect of a plus or minus one degree Celsius temperature change can be extremely dramatic. For example, it can cause damage to the equipment, it can make the system produce heating when you want cooling or vice versa. Likewise, if the system is operating near the fluid's freezing point, a drop of just one degree Celsius can cause the fluid to begin to freeze. In other words, in some cases, a change in fluid temperature of plus or minus one degree Celsius can actually lead to the complete failure of a geothermal system. Until this point, we've been focusing on the instantaneous performance changes, but how do these effects add up over the course of a year of operation? And what is the resulting cost or savings from a plus or minus one degree change in Delta T? If we have a geothermal system that is sized for 100 kilowatts of capacity, or approximately 28 tons, it can produce 100 kilowatts of peak heating and cooling energy. While operating with a small baseline Delta T, how much energy would be gained or lost in a year if we changed this delta T by just one degree? The answer is 438,000 kilowatt hours or nearly 1.5 billion BTUs across the year. If our energy cost is 30 cents per kilowatt hour, this means that we could be saving or losing a total of $131,400 across the year. Even though it may seem that one degree Celsius is a small change that can be ignored in geothermal systems, this change can have a significant impact on the performance, efficiency, and cost. It is essential that in the design and operating stages, temperature change across the in-ground heat exchangers are calculated or measured with a tighter accuracy than plus or minus one degree. As well, choices in the piping underground, such as foregoing insulation on supply and return lines, spacing close enough to feel thermal interference from other equipment, or having auxiliary systems connected to the same loop can result in fluid temperature changes beyond the baseline delta T of at least plus or minus one degree Celsius. Of course, if there were temperature changes beyond just one degree, all of these effects to performance, efficiency, and cost would be amplified even more. By paying close attention to the change in fluid temperatures, a geothermal system can be more powerful, efficient, and reliable. Head over to the Umni blog for more information about these calculations and effects.